Guys, today I'm back down at my pond, and two weeks ago I made a video showing you how this pond is actually not really a pond. It's fed by a stream through a series of pipes that are laid underground. The water goes into this pond, it fills up as much as it can, and then any overflow continues down the side of this mountain. But the bigger question I got was, what's in the pond? What's living on the bottom? So to answer that question, this is a small submersible. It's kind of like a mini Alvin, if you guys know what that is from the... Uh, Woods Hole. This is battery powered. It has a camera in the front. It's got lights. A couple of weeks ago, right after I shot that first video, I grabbed this robot to come down, but the thing was already frozen. It was just too late. I was really disappointed. Fortunately, we've had some sun and now we can get started and see what's going on. In today's day and age, wires don't always seem like a good thing, but this one makes sense. If this was 100% wireless, once you send it under the water, if it gets caught in anything, you basically be screwed. This is the radio receiver and it also is the other end of the cable. So if the robot were to get stuck, this cable is strong enough to give it a pull. And this is gonna give you a much better wireless signal because all of that data and information is starting from the surface. So the only thing I need to use this is a cell phone with the app and of course the robot itself. It's a little bit like a video game. There we go bring this thing down so we are right in the middle of the pond and our depth reading says point point two so it's I'd say it's fairly accurate I'm a little bit under the water now at 11 feet so the pond is roughly 12 feet deep now we go underneath the surface and the real journey begins. Now I've been waiting six months to see what was going on down here and I was a little bit nervous. You never know what you're gonna find in any pond. And through the camera on this drone, this place kinda looks like I'm on Mars, but in reality, it's just dirt, leaves. Looks pretty natural to me because I wasn't sure if this place was gonna actually be made of concrete. The battery on this lasts about an hour and a half and I was almost at the end and I finally came on this and I really couldn't believe it. First I thought this thing was just a piece of trash, but this is the actual pipe that is feeding the entire pond. Now you can see all that dirt and debris, but that stuff is coming from here. This is the source that fills that entire pond. The water runs down the side of the mountain, gets diverted into this small cistern, but unfortunately this thing had gotten clogged. And in my last video, I was able to clear this thing out and as soon as I did, the water level started to drop here. And then once I saw this bit in the video, I knew I'd finally found the other end of the pipe. And this is going to be valuable if I ever need to clean it out. Now you might be wondering about fish, and I'm going to get there in a second. But the next weird thing I found was this. Now first, I had no idea what I was looking at. I thought this might be the bucket to a tractor. Now do you have any idea what you might be looking at? Well, I didn't either until I showed this video to my daughter and instantly she said, Dad, that's a chair sitting on the bottom of the pond and I believe she's right. But there's still one thing missing. Where are the fish? Now, it's the middle of December here and this water is really cold. And my understanding about them is they kind of hibernate over the winter and they're not going to be nearly as active or as easy to find. But eventually when I went through the footage, I caught this one frame of a small fish swimming that may have gotten stirred up while the robot was running. So that gave me a little bit of encouragement to know that there is in fact fish living in here, but I don't know to what degree or how many of them there are. The other sad news is this pond froze over again the very next day, so this is my only chance to get underneath the water to see what was going on. But I suspect when the water gets warmer, things are going to be a lot more active, and I'll definitely share some videos. So after doing this, the mystery of this mystery pond is finally getting unraveled a bit. And if you have any more thoughts about how this thing is working, maybe where the fish are hiding, be sure to leave me a comment below and let me know your thoughts.